We've located many defense witnesses that will testify that she was the victim of uh, domestic violence and that the actions she took that night were to save her own life. She had plenty of questions to answer, so let's head right over to the interrogation room and see what she had to say for herself and what detectives made of her pleas to be exonerated for this bloody killing. We jump right into Courtney meeting Detective Racino and Sergeant Rodriguez, and the model is still covered in Christian's blood. At this time, he was still fighting for his life at a nearby hospital. The stakes are about to raise in this dramatic tale of love and violence. So grab some popcorn and get ready for the twisted, bloody story of the OnlyFans killer. My apologies for being absolutely covered in blood. Listen, you don't have to apologize, okay? Things happen and you can't control it. Okay? So, you don't have to apologize for anything, all right? What's your name? I'm Detective Brasino, okay? And this is my partner, Sergeant Rodriguez, okay? Um, uh, today's Sunday, April 3, and the time is 7.36 p.m., all right? Um, what's your first name? Courtney. Courtney, can you spell that for me, please? C-O-U-R-T-N-E-Y. <coughs> And your last name? C-L-E-N-N-E-Y. Okay. Well, you're still in the hospital right now, so... Okay. Mm -hmm. Just take a breather, okay? I know this, is, this, this must be very rough for you right now. No, we were supposed to go to the park with my dogs today. Like, I just did not know how I explained this. But sorry. Mm. That's not what we're talking about. You asked me my birthday. Yes. Okay, what's the next one? Are you currently living there? Um, yes. Yeah? The address is 3131 Northeast 7th Avenue. Mm hmm Okay. Um, and what apartment was it? 2201. 2201. How long have you guys been, have you been living there? Since, um, the first or second week of January. Oh, this year? Mm hmm 2022. Yeah, we moved here in January this year together from Austin. From Boston? From Austin. From Austin. Oh, okay. When did you guys come to Miami from Austin? We visited last year in March, and we loved it. And we travel all the time together. We like the beach. Yeah. It's pretty good. Okay. I mean, I've always wanted to live here, so he was like, he was like, he wanted to move to London. I yeah. wanted to move here. And I was like, maybe we should start in the U.S. Yeah, and, and then like that, and then we did it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. How long have you guys been together? Um, about two years. About two a years. year and a half to two years, yeah. yeah. At this point, she decides to inquire about Christian, asking if he's okay. Given that she was the one who stabbed him, she probably ought to know that the answer to this question is no. Is he okay? He's, this, he's still at the hospital. They're still, I, you I know, know. I'm monitoring him and talking to him. So we're waiting. Oh my God! So he's not. Even, he didn't even have to have surgery. Well, I don't know. They're they're okay. they're still they're still uh, doing um, X-rays and stuff like that. So I don't know yet. I'm waiting to hear a response. That's all I have to know. Thank okay. God. So that's all I need. We'll get to that in, in in a little bit. Okay. And I'll, when, once we're done, I'll go talk to them again and see what's what's the, what's the update. Okay. So you said one and a half a year, two, two years? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you said that today you guys were supposed to go to the park? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... We were, um, well, I'll just let you ask questions and I'll answer. No, you can tell me whatever you want. You can tell me whenever you want. Um, yeah. We just had just gotten back together. I had broken up with him, and then he came back the last, like, two nights. Mm -hmm. And everything was perfect. And then just got like into an argument, and I ended up getting scared. And I think that I overreacted, or not overreacted necessarily, but mm -hmm. reacted. And I just, but um, yeah, we were right before before anything happened. We were going to walk my dogs mm -hmm. down to this park over by like the Paramount, mm -hmm. which has like the the um, beach volleyball and basketball court and all that. We're gonna walk them over there and let my dog Ranger play soccer. 
That was my plan for the day, and then go. There's little doubt that her day didn't go according to plan, but the detective wants to press for more information on the bloody scene at her apartment, but he first wants to figure out her relationship to Christian. Does he have any family? He does, he is. Yeah. He is. Um, his mom and grandma, he, uh, he's, he's closest to. Mom and grandma? Mm-hmm. We're here in Miami, or? They live in Dallas. I think his grandma may, they may still be in Nigeria, um, because they visit a lot, but I think that they're back in Dallas. Okay. Mm -hmm. He has a brother that lives in, I do, I think, Houston. I don't know where his sister lives. Do you happen to know off the top of your head their phone number or? Um, none of theirs, no. No? No. Do you have it on your phone number, on your phone or? I think that I would have his, his mom mm -hmm. on my phone for sure and then maybe his grandma. Oh, okay. What's his mom's name? You know, he told me. I think she, I'm really, I'm terrible at right now. I really yeah. Mean, I like I'm uh, remembering And I met her multiple times, and I've been to her house, and I still didn't tell you. That's oh. pretty bad. I mean, how many times have you seen her? I think four times. So here, we get the first hint that something might not be right. She can't remember her partner's mom's name even after visiting there four times. I'm pretty sure it's spread apart, right? Yeah. So, I wouldn't imagine to, like, remember somebody's name that easy. I'm, I'm really bad at remembering names too. So, again. <laughs> um, how about his brother? You know his brother's name? Or? No? Okay. He, he is very, like, not, I guess, like, too thorough mm -hmm. with talking about. I mean, like, he's not really, like, that thorough or something. He doesn't really talk as much about his family as I do mine. I talk my, about my family all the time. The family of Christian Obumseli claims that he was stabbed to death in an unprovoked attack by his girlfriend, OnlyFans star, Courtney Taylor. Next, the detective wants to know more about their working life, but Courtney doesn't seem to want to tell the whole truth about her OnlyFans work here. Okay, so, um, do you guys work here in Miami, or do you guys have your own business? Um, I do social media, so I'm a Influencer, I guess is what. Oh, yeah. Call us, yes, an influencer. Um, and he does stocks and crypto. What do you focus on, like Instagram or all social media? Apps? Instagram, only oh, then. Oh, okay. It's just, yeah. What's, uh, it pays the bills. So. What's your Instagram? Um. Crypto. Stocks and crypto. He just has stocks and stuff crypto. Yeah, so he's pretty good with numbers and all of that. Yeah. And he's done that for since you've known him, or? Um, I mean, as far as I know, he's done it since he was 19, and he's 27. Okay. So he's pretty damn good at it. I guess compared to other people that do it. Yeah. And um, how long were you guys planning on being in Miami or before going to London? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think London was ever really going to happen. I don't think I would ever do that. Um, but yeah. Um, we were going to move into a house. Mm -hmm. So have an apartment and then we were like, maybe just move here for a year. And then once we got here, we were like, mm, no, this is dope. Yeah. So he, we're, we have the dog picked out. Um, it's Golden Retriever. We're going to name Mellow. 
we were gonna get out. We're gonna have a backyard. Because I have two dogs and then we're gonna have three. So we're planning on staying here for a while. Okay. I just hope we get the opportunity to do that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Once again, you don't have to apologize. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully I'm over freaking out and, and, and like I'll be able to see him or whatever. But I just, I don't see it. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I will keep it together. Okay. Um, so, how about before we go into like the details of what happened today, okay? Ask to swear you in and read you a couple other paperwork. It was just a normal process for everybody, with victims, witnesses, everybody, okay? As we can see, the detective is taking a soft approach and introduces the information that this is an investigation without necessarily wanting to freak her out and tell her she's the one being investigated. Uh, this is an investigation into, uh, what do you call it, a domestic dispute, which occurred at 3131. Northeast 7th Avenue, apartment 2201. Um, in reference to case number, you have a problem? Yeah, sorry. It's going to be 22 040 023743. The City of Miami Police incident number. Okay. This tape statement is being taken in the City of Miami Police. Department, uh, the investigation office, which is located at 400 Northwest Second Avenue, Miami Dade County, Florida. Okay. Um, okay. Do you raise your hand? Your right hand. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you then. No, I do. Okay. You put your hand down. Um, real quick, do you, have you taken any alcohol or medication or narcotics today? Um, no. No? Mm. Um, so I, I, uh, I'm just like medicine, but, I but nothing that was mind altering. Oh, okay, like what? Um, I actually don't know what it's called, taking okay. medication, just for, um. What was the medication for, if you don't mind me asking? So what we now know is that Courtney had recently received a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder and had just begun treatment for this. What is your level of education? Was it the last grade um, or did you graduate? From college. From college? Okay. What college was that? ACC and Santa Monica Community College. Santa Monica. Okay. How long of uh, school did you do there? Approximately. It's like in at each one, well, ACC about a year and a half, I think. Uh -huh. Santa Monica, like a semester or two. Okay. That was never for me. Okay. Um, do you have any, have you been diagnosed with any mental disability or anything like that? No? Okay. Then I'm going to move over to this one. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer or for advice before we ask any questions. You have the right to have a lawyer with you during questioning. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning, if you wish. Um, you can decide at any time to exercise these rights and, and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand each of these uh, rights I've explained to you? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Would I be able to talk to my father? Because huh? he's pretty much acts as my attorney with, like, is I mean, not attorney? like for stuff like this, obviously, I've never been in this kind of situation. Is he an attorney? Or? Um, no. Um, he's just... It's becoming obvious that, guilty or innocent, Courtney has made a huge, huge mistake. She should have asked for an attorney right away and not said anything until she got one. We'll give you a chance to talk to your, your father later, okay? Um, I have, mean, before, I'd like to... I just feel like, I feel like, I don't know, 
I mean, I think every, I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine, and I will be fine. I got my back on me, but I just, I just would like to talk to somebody. No worries. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to give you some time to, to talk to that or with anybody that you need to talk to. Okay. And I wanna go. I wanna go. I wanna go home and see my dogs. And I wanna go to the hospital. Will I be able to do we, that we tonight? Took, uh, I'm sorry. We took care of the dogs. We found someone. I believe your mom mentioned that that's taken care of them before when you traveled. Uh, mm -hmm. So love and touch. Yeah. Yeah. So we got we got able to get a hold of them, and they're actually gonna be taken over there. It's just so you know. So they're taken care of. They're in good hands. They're probably actually already there now. Okay. So we took care of those. Cause I know they were on scene or going back and forth, and they seem a little, you know, yeah. I, I know how dogs are, we're all dog lovers here, all three of us, you know, we also have dogs, so it's like family, and uh, we took care of them, they, just so you know, yeah, the, 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 female, uh, the female officer that was over there was talking to my mom and tried, and yeah, trying to get the one that was food, thank God, yeah, they're in yeah. good hands, thank you, yeah. I just, I want to be, I, I, I want, I want to, and I want to go sit at the hospital. Am I going to be able to do that? So far right now, I can't give you an answer, okay? We just have to go through everything. Because remember, this, is, this just happened, so I can't really give you a straight answer. If I, if I do, I would be lying to you, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to lie to you. Okay. Okay. Just as, just as well as I don't want you to lie to me, I don't want to lie to you. We want to be able to understand everything that went that hap went down today, okay? As truthful uh, uh, as as we as we can be, okay? Yeah. Okay. Having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us? Mm. Yeah. If I don't, what? <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's, it's your choice. It's your right. But we, at the end of the day, we just want to figure out what happened, okay? We just want to hear your side of the story and what, what occurred so we can piece this together and, and come to an understanding. Yeah? Yeah, yeah fortunately we weren't there, you know. Um, you were, so there's no better person to tell from you. And it took freak it took so, so long for, I, I, don't, I don't know what, I don't, I don't, I honestly, it was such a blur. Mm -hmm. I was on the phone with my mom. I don't know. Right for me right over here. Yeah, you can reread it. Take your time, reread it again. Same thing you this is why I, I would like to call my dad and say, can I just do this? Or should I have to get a lawyer? Because I realize, like, how very serious yeah. this is. Like, I mean, I I mean, I was sitting there in a freaking puddle of my boyfriend's blood begging him to, like, please not, like, <laughs> give up on me. Like, man, like, this shit is serious. <laughs> so, I mean... I don't think I'm necessarily in trouble, but like I just would like to. I mean, can I just talk to? Him? I mean, I have, I have. This happened, and I was. The whole situation happened, and I haven't talked to anybody yeah. who means anything. Anymore. No, I, I understand. Uh, right now, okay, right well, now, you know what? I. Uh, okay. What? No, just. No, we, I just. I've you never been in that kind of situation. I just. I you could. Can, you can talk to them later. Because. But before I talk to you guys. Why can't I talk to him beforehand? Well, because I, w I, w I would like to understand what's what's going on. I know, but like if I say, hey, is it cool if I sign a constitutional rights waiver? It's only now beginning to dawn on Courtney that she needs legal representation, but she still doesn't press for it, preferring to talk to her dad. Something else is bothering her, though, and she gets straight to the point. Sergeant Rodriguez's jacket is freaking her out. My boyfriend is not dead, is he? Well, he can't talk to us right now either way he's in the hospital. Your, your jacket says homicide. Yeah, so I don't That's know. That's like the Dexter believe, vibe. All I of believe the things are like. I to you on scene that it's Sunday. So Sunday, the domestic violence units don't work. So we handle their their calls. Anytime we get into the domestic violence calls, we handle it for them. Okay. And so that's why we were raised from the beginning. Can I go and come back? No, no, no. Unfortunately, no, I can't. It's steps, you know, once we have this, then we'll go to the next step. And Am I, is there a chance I'm going to go home tonight? I, I don't have a definite answer for you. Okay, well, I'll just have to tell you what's going on. Okay, so the time is...
I just I need a I need a APM. from the start, uh, you guys are supposed to take out your dogs to the park, right? And then what happens after that? Um, like I said, a little bit blur. Yeah. Um, I was doing laundry mm -hmm. and watching a Christina Randall or listening to a Christina Randall video. And tried to call my mom. She didn't answer the first time. And then he came back with a subway sandwich. Before he left, he recited exactly what I wanted. And I said, I said, let me. I'll text what I want to you. And he said, I know what you want. And I said, No, you don't. He recited it to me before he left. <laughs> and he got it perfectly right. Okay. Uh, and then he left, I guess he went to go bike over there. He, that's just what he said. I don't know if he walked or biked, but he told me he was going to bike or something. Like a bicycle? Yeah. Okay. Um, he came back, um, and I said something about, like, oh, are you going to, like, reshare your location with me? Like, did you want to share it? And um, he said, yeah. Yeah, I didn't share it. And I was like, oh, when did you do that? And it was the other day, like, when you were done with me. And I was like... Okay, well, fair enough. I'm, like, reshare it. Um, and then he told, I mean, they kind of, like, turned into, like, a little, like, argument or something. And then he told me to reshare mine, and I was like, okay, yeah, I will. And then I didn't do it immediately. Uh, he asked me about it again. Um, and I don't know what I was thinking, but I just said, something about, well, what if I'm somewhere you don't want me to be? Okay. Which I'm, I wouldn't have been. I love him. Um, but, just feel like, you know, maybe you don't want to know where I am. I guess maybe it would just, like, hurt him because he was pressing me. Um, and he ended up pinning me against the wall. And then, I mean, I said, like, choking me on the floor. It's just, like, they were looking at my neck, and I was like, I mean, I'm not saying, like, choking me, like, you know, whatever. But, I mean, he had my, like, neck. Like, I, I and this happened twice before, okay. where I couldn't breathe, and I was on the floor. Yeah. I could not breathe. And I don't think that he was trying to kill me, mm -hmm. but I was scared. And all three times I have been scared. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm on the floor. And you have you been and was me up. Um, I'm on the uh, get my mom on the phone and I'm just trying to really remember. Hey, my mom on the phone. Um, and I remember she was standing like against the couch. Like we were like we were obviously it was a big deal at this point. Mm -hmm. Um. So this happened like over by the door and somehow moved like over in the living room. He was standing by uh, by the couch, facing toward the kitchen, and I was in the kitchen. And then he just like, I could see like all the whites in his eyes and he was like, like coming at me. And so I grabbed, I grabbed one of these knives. My mom got me for Christmas. I grabbed one of them. And I was like, I swear, I swear to God, I swear to God. It was just like, I, I mean, I, I would be like, don't come anywhere closer to me. Because, I, could, I mean, earlier, I was having two other times I couldn't breathe. I'm sorry. I couldn't breathe. And it's very scary. And I just think, like, just like this kind of thing where I was saying, like, do you know if he's okay? If he, like, if, he, if he's choking me and he's angry enough, he might like, or, I mean, this is different, I think, but if he's like choking me or like pinning me or something and I can't breathe, he might go too long. So I grab my, sorry, I grab my, I grab my knife and I said, don't come anywhere closer to me. I had absolutely no intention of using it. 
I'm on the phone with my mom, and he's coming at me like he's gonna grab either the phone or like the knife or something. And so I was just like, I, I was like, don't, don't come any closer. It's coming at me, and I threw it. And I meant for it to go. How far away was he? So, well, I was by my fridge, and he was like by the edge of one of the chairs of the sofa. Um, okay. Like comparing to what he I'm, I'm trying to think in my head. I'm trying to make the. Was it closer than the lion? No. What? Was this further? Okay. So like what? Like the length, length of his room? No, yeah. further than yeah. that. Okay. Oh well, if I said yeah, you're right. It's more than ten feet. Then it was definitely further than this. Okay. Well, it wasn't closer. It looks a lot smaller than it is here. It was further than that. Okay. So then um, you were by the I fridge and he was by the couch. You were by the fridge and he was by the couch. Yes, I was between. I was then in front of the fridge. He was by the couch. Yes. And then behind, the behind my island. Then what kind of movements did he make? That he uh, at the at the moment he was gonna walk running up. Running at me. Running. Okay. Well, tar charging, aggressively walking, something. What was he doing? Like, was he doing something with his hands or? Doing he had his hands up. I really could. I couldn't tell you. Hey. Was he yelling at you at the time? Yes. Yeah. What was he saying? Mm hmm. Well, so I put my hand up, so I really need to like think. So. Yeah. I I don't remember one of the things, but I don't think it's relevant. No, go ahead. Tell me. It might be relevant. It might. Help me understand this a little more. He said, why don't you go find one of those guys in GYD? Because I had said something about that when I broke up with him mm -hmm. like a week ago. Out of anger. I didn't say it because I want that. Because mm -hmm. I love him. Uh-huh. Um, but that was just one of the things that you said. Was that at the moment that he was charging you or earlier in one of the arguments? It was before... He choked me when I, yes, it was before he choked me. Okay. And, or whatever. Um, so, he gets. So, no, not right then. I couldn't tell you what I was said right then. Okay. So. But I swear to God, I was scared. I mean, after like what I had just, I was yeah. scared. And I was on the phone with my mom, and it was still happening. Yeah. I was scared. So you told me you told me that that he had you against the wall at one point, right, with the hands over your neck. Mm -hmm. And what? How did you end up from the wall to the ground? Let me go. Uh huh. Let me go, and then I started swinging on him because I had been against the wall. Okay. I started trying to hit him. Yeah. And then he put me on the ground. He dropped you to the ground. What did he do? Like. Did he like lift you up, or did he grab your hair? Did he just kind of like rotate you onto the ground? I really couldn't even tell you. He pushed you. I could. I. I. If I could have like been given all these questions, you know, before, I could be like, hmm, please let me think about it. Or when I'm trying to remember like a whole situation of where I was very upset about something, yeah. which I've learned this in therapy or whatever. It's like. Write down like all the details so you don't forget. Just like write it all out clearly mm -hmm. so it makes sense to you and makes sense to somebody else. But I haven't had a chance to have a pen and paper or my phone mm -hmm. to like write down exactly what happened. And yeah, I haven't really even like fully thought about it. Yeah. So honestly, my, my answer is I couldn't, even, I don't remember. That's fine. Um, so he has you on the ground, you end up on the ground, and he has his hands over your, your neck, correct? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, and then, uh, is he saying something to you at the time when he's on the ground on top of you? Or? He was. He was saying something like gritting his teeth. I don't remember what it was. Like what? He was saying something like gritting his teeth, like with the white of his oh, eyes. Okay. But I don't remember what it was. Okay. Um, and then, uh, and then he, at one point, he stops. Right? Sorry. And, um, 
what you get up? Do you go to the bedroom or what do you do? Mm -hmm. I go get my I get my phone from um, the kitchen. I got my phone from the kitchen. I called my mom. I was talking to her, and then he was following me around the apartment. And actually, like I, I mean, just like after I'm not. I mean, we shouldn't be together. You guys have a history of domestic violence? Yeah. You say you've been together how long, sir? Almost two years. Almost two years. And a half two years. So how many how many incidents you think you've had? I, I don't I don't know, but we shouldn't be together. We say one or two or just too many too. It seems that Courtney doesn't want to answer questions about their history of domestic violence. Could this be because it's clearly not just a one-way street? Then something dramatic happens. Blood. Too many too. Oh my god. Oh my god. I haven't touched my ankle. It's like what? Blood. Like I just want, I just want to take a shower. God. Um. Okay. No, 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 no. We can, we can. I'll get you a test. Can, I, I'm not trying to interrupt the. No, no, no. You keep on. This is absolutely the most insane that I think I've ever been involved in. I think and anybody that no, goes through this would be a just insane. What'd you say? I think that if anybody goes through this type of situation, it would be pretty insane for them. So. Okay. Yeah. You said uh, well, have you domestic had, violence. Have you made a report before? Uh, no. You've never made a report? Oh, I did in um, I did in Dallas actually about yeah. a year ago, um, and he was detained. And what happened team. there? Um, he had pushed me in the um, lobby, but it wasn't like a big deal, and they made it a huge deal. Mm -hmm. um, and he ended up getting taken to the hospital or jail or something. Yeah. Um, which I don't think it was necessary, but yeah, and he had been. And then also, I I have been arrested for it as well in um, Vegas in August. Oh. So he and I each had one. Okay. What happened in Vegas? Um, we just got in an argument in the hotel room, mm -hmm. and um, what I guess made them arrest me was that I said I I had thrown a glass at him. Oh. Okay. Like a glass of like a drink, okay. like which I think until that point it was like fine, I guess, yeah. like I didn't, whatever, but they asked like, oh, did you throw something at him? Because I guess they went upstairs and they said, you go, did you throw a drink at him? And I said, yes, I did. Because, what's the point? Like, I guess it's, yeah. whatever. So, yeah, they went up and they said, I guess they asked me about it, and I said yes, and they said, okay, well, that's, DV or battery or something, not assault, but something yeah. like that. And so I got arrested and I, I was held for 12 hours. That wasn't fun. Um, but yeah, those are the two okay. incidences for I don't know what the, what what the, what the incidents for him was. Like. Um, about how many incidents have you guys had here in Miami since January? What do you mean? Like, how many are, like, how many times has the police been called to your apartment? Or you you called the police since January? Okay. Um, police have been called once mm -hmm. because I called them because my boyfriend was threatening suicide. Okay. Um, I'm sure there are records of that or whatever. I don't know how. Why I was he uh, threatening suicide? I, I don't remember exactly what the situation was. Mm -hmm. But he was, um, he had taken a knife. Um, he grabbed it in front of my face, and then I got scared, and he was kind of waving it at me, but it wasn't for me, and then he took it into the extra room and slammed the door, and he has, he has a history of um, self-harm, so I was kind of just like, okay, well, let me go in there and chase him, yeah. regardless of whether or not what's going on. 
and I tried to open the door, and he wouldn't open the door. So I got really scared that he was doing something in there that I couldn't control, so mm-hmm. I called the cops. And he wasn't very happy with me about that, but I was really scared. Did he say um, anything that he was going to do to himself, or...? And he threatened it many, many times, but okay. um, I don't remember if he did it right then. Um, Does he suffer from anything? Then So that's what you told me. Yeah. Right. And then um, the time they called police. Okay, and then this, I mean, the, the police were called because of us, actually, um, actually because of us, twice. I mean, if I'm being correct. Yeah. It was that time when mm-hmm. I called, and then this time when it was obviously absolutely necessary. Okay. Um, Oh, I was the one who called 911. Because <laughs> I was literally asking him, what is our address, what is our address? Because I could not think straight. Maybe what is our address? Today? Yeah, so, yeah it was today. Oh. Okay, so it was that one. Um, but the cops have been up there um, one other time yesterday mm-hmm. for absolutely no reason. Absolutely none. They harassed me. Um, not, the, not the police, but um, security guards from the from office, like young security guards. Okay. Came up for no reason. Um, bothered him, bothered me. I was about to go to the pool. I said, uh, they said, do you want us to keep him out of here? And I said, I mean, yeah, but y'all have been letting him up all week when he hasn't had a key. Yeah. But I mean, no. Do you want us to call the cops? No. It's fine. Like, I didn't want him to go get arrested. Like, there's no reason for that. And so, whatever. So I said no. And then he, um, I guess he just wanted to call the police or something because right after that he goes, well, we saw you shove him, which he was referring to downstairs in the elevator. My boyfriend had followed me into the elevator, Mm -hmm. and I didn't want him to come in. So I go, stop following me, and I did this. And we were like... I mean, Christian will attest to a lot of stuff. Yeah. But that just didn't happen. So it's like he moved from Christian to me. It seemed like he just wanted to cause trouble. Yeah. So um, the police were involved yesterday when there shouldn't have been anything. Um, And then I think there was like one or two times where they, I don't think the police were called, but maybe security, um, when... Well, if you're talking about police, that's yeah. definitely the only time I can Okay. Security have been called. So no. I complain. For sure. Because of arguments or... Mm-hmm. Um, and what do you guys usually argue about? Or is it always a different issue? about those arguments or no? I don't think there's a point. I, 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 I cannot I mean, remember everything, so I'm not, yeah. I don't want to remember part of it. Okay. Would you say it's jealousy related? For yeah. sure, for I'm some jealous. of it, yeah. yeah. So, you think you can tell us the story one more time, just so I can make sure that I didn't miss anything? Didn't she write everything down? No, um, he's writing it down for me. But I just want I just want to make sure that you can explain to us one more time the story. As we reach a critical part of the interview, the detective may have missed a few opportunities to really press home on some things that Courtney is admitted to. Now, he's going to use a classic technique of getting her to repeat her story and look for inconsistencies. Okay. Well, I mean, you can see how I am. Um, okay. Well, he went to go get me Subway. Mm-hmm. We wake up. We've broken up. I broke up with him about a week ago. My mom came into town. She was in town because of it. And I find, I told her, like... Anyway, she came into town because of this. She was there for about six days. My boyfriend was freaking squatting in my elevator, like, little room. But I didn't want to kick him out because 
He said he wanted to be close to me. I'm like, okay. Um, I eventually feel like, okay, I got this under control. You can go home. Okay. Then she goes home. That that crap with the security guard who I guess just had an agenda. Had an agenda. That happened yesterday. Okay. Um, or was it day before yesterday? Honestly, I really don't. I can't think of it. It's day before yesterday. Or yesterday. Um, so. Which security guard is this? Do you know his name? Or I don't remember name? his name. I could point him out in the lineup okay. in one second. Um, so after that fact, I was like, wow, you just tried to cause a problem for no no reason. I thought it was his fault. I was like, why are you doing this? Like, I, Just because, like I said, that we're over blah, blah, blah. And he was trying to talk to me, and I just didn't want to. I didn't want to talk to him. I really let him have it over the phone. And I let him come back and spend the night. And then he explained the whole thing. And I was like, oh, my gosh. It's definitely too nice to you. Yeah. Um, he explained the whole thing. And I was like, okay, you know what? Let's agree. We will never, like, touch each other again out of anger. And he will never gaslight me again. Those were the two, like, main things. And this was a very light, light night. So the last couple days have been, he was just great. He was happy to be back in the apartment. I was happy to have him back in the apartment because I missed him. And been waking up telling me, good morning, I love you, touching me. Like, it's just, I felt very, very loved when I woke up this morning. That's why I'm so, like, heartbroken. It's just like, why? Why? Like, I should have just left the apartment. Mm -hmm come to think of it um okay so anyway he went to go get me subway or he went to go get himself subway then got me subway he rode his bike or i guess whatever walked something came back and then um i was trying to look for his location like while he was gone not because i thought was wondering where he was like sketchy yeah but i'm just like trying to see how far he was because yeah, i was, he was on his way back or? yeah Okay. I mean, yeah. So I couldn't see it, and he said that he would have changed. He would change it the night before. I think I don't know. Um, and he was at. I. He asked me if I would change mine back, and I said something along the lines of what, what. What? Oh. Said something. I, I'm staring at your yellow paper because it's in front of me. I cannot read one thing, so I don't know if you think no. like I'm. No. Okay. So the sub subway thing. He comes back. I asked him about his location. He said he'll change it. Asked me about mine. Um. I said something mean or unnecessary about even though I wasn't anywhere, saying something like, oh, well, you wouldn't want to know, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and he ended up getting upset, and that's kind of like where I went from there. I mean, it's the wall. I don't remember exactly where it went from there, and I was on the floor. Let me go. I called my mom. So um, he, had you, he, had, he had you against the wall. He was holding you by the neck, right? Yes. And then he let you go. You start swinging at him. And then he ends up putting you on the, on, on the ground. Mm -hmm. Correct? Here, it feels like the detective is actually prompting her to recall her earlier story. This is a golden opportunity to uncover inconsistencies, and the detective seems to be passing it up by helping her. Yeah, when I was up against the wall, I, I mean, when I when he had me like this, yeah. I was just trying to get it off. Yeah, you're trying to get it off. But it wasn't, I, I didn't feel, I didn't feel. You felt the pressure. It wasn't a long time. Yeah. It wasn't a long time, and it wasn't extremely hard. It was kind of just like, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay. And then he put you on the ground after that. Mm hmm And then he said something that you don't remember what he said. And then he let you go. And you got up, and then what happened? When I went into the kitchen, I picked up my phone from my charger okay. to call my mom. Um, actually, at that point, I walked into the living room. 
watch this on the couch. I didn't like. I called my mom. You could see I was calling my mom. Okay. That made him angry. I went in his living room, took us out on the couch. He came in there and tried to get the phone out of my hand, so I went in back into the kitchen. And at that point, I was sitting there and I said, I grabbed the knife, which. Did he ever get the phone out of your hands or? No. 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 Um, he just came over to me and was trying. To I don't. I don't not think that this was. <coughs> I don't, I don't know. I really don't know if this is justified at all. I really, I actually don't know. Well, I really don't know, out. because I know I was scared, but I really don't know. So you grabbed a knife? Because I grabbed, okay, yeah, I grabbed a knife. I grabbed a knife, and I, I said, like, pretty much just, like, don't get any close to me. And then, you know what I mean? Said something, came at me. And then I just, like, threw it. And I really How exactly was thinking, did you throw it? Did you just throw it like that? How many or, times? No, how 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 exactly did you throw it? Like you threw it like this or kinda like you like kinda like flung it at him overhead or how how did that Oh I just flung it. You just flung it? Over your head or from like like this. Okay. I'm so from yeah. like beside I'm your head. Holding it, yeah. So not like okay, like I'm holding it like this. This is not the knife, the, um, the, the blade, or? right, the blade, uh, I'm not, I just, for dang sure, did not stab him. That would be insane. I mean, I didn't even think that this would touch him, but I mean, I thought that I would scare him, I would scare him by just grabbing it. I thought I would scare him by just grabbing it, but that didn't work. Um, so, anyway, comes at me, and then I just fun it. Okay. And I was kind of just trying to fling it, fling it past when you him. When you threw it, when you flung it, how close was he at that time? I mean, I said 10 feet, but if this is 10 feet, it was definitely more than 10 feet. Okay. And I mean, if somebody goes into my apartment, they can see how far it was. Yeah. But I did not, I did not want it to actually injure him. I mean, injure him. Mm -hmm. That and what did he okay do? What did, kind of what did he do after after you you flung the knife out? Did he walk around or did he fall right then and there or what happened? He fell down. He fell down. Yeah. He didn't he didn't walk around or anything like that or still try and chase you or or what? No, because it hit him. Because it hit him. You know where the where the knife fell? Maybe it'll fit right here. Okay. And um and what did you do after he fell? Um, I just I ran over to him and grabbed him and like it was just like a blur. But I ran over to him and I grabbed him and I just said, Oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> like I'm like the worst person to be around. What do I do? Um and he said he said, um, he said, call somebody, and I was on the phone with my mom. He said that? Um, he said, call, he said, just, just call somebody, and I was like, okay, I'm on the phone with my mom. I said, I said, mom, what do I do? I just she said, call 911. I think I called 911. I actually don't remember. Why did I end up taking it close to the door? I don't remember. Uh, I think, I think that he walked closer to the door because we ended up closer over there. I, I think, yeah, he fell down close to the um, couch. Yeah. There's probably blood all over that white couch. Um, <laughs> you know, I bet you anything is everywhere. Um, he, we somehow ended up over, like, by the extra bathroom in our, um, like, little, like, laundry closet. Yeah. Um, and there was, like, he was just bleeding a lot. And I was holding him. And he said, put pressure on it. He kept trying to lay down. And it looked like he was losing. And like, oh my God, God forbid I lose Christian. Like, I'm so okay with like us breaking up at some point or now, or obviously, whatever. I don't give a shit. But God forbid anything, anything happens to him. God forbid. Um, so, yeah. I just like, you just kept trying to lay down, and I was like, please.
Christian, please don't do this. Please don't f this to me. And he kept like, he kept sounding like, he kept sounding like he couldn't talk. Or something like, he was just like closing his eyes. Like, Wake up, your, open your eyes, open your eyes. And I was talking to him about his mom and his grandma. And it just felt like, it felt like everybody was, every second was like a freaking minute. Yeah. Because I was like, what is he, he was the one who told me to put pressure. I'm just like a freaking idiot. So I'm like trying to keep him upright because he keeps trying to lay down. I'm, I mean, I'm thinking blood flow, right? You're like, you don't want to lay down if you're losing blood. I, that's what I would think. And he's saying just put put pressure on it. So I don't remember what I got, but I got something and I just like put it on it. And I was like holding him and he kept trying to lay down. He's a freaking big man. So I was trying to hold him up and push it into him. Was a knife stuck on him, or, or somebody pulled it out? No, and I thought about, oh my god, I thought about this while you guys were outside. I was thinking, why did it, why did it start, like, why did it start bleeding so, so much? Because if it just, like, hit him, I'm, I'm thinking maybe it just, I don't know, like, if, if it was really deep or not, I don't know if it just hit him <coughs> and it came out, or if he grabbed it, because I almost got a little irritated with him while y'all were out there, because I was like, I swear, this is freaking rule number one. If you watch Game of Thrones or anything else, you're gonna anything. Yeah. You, you have something in you. Typically, you don't pull it out, right? I mean, y'all would know better than I do. Okay. So I kind of got a little irritated because I was like, I was just assuming he pulled it out. But I don't know. Maybe it just fell out. Okay. So, following the second recounting of the story, the officers want to return to the violent nature of their relationship and see if Courtney can tell them about which one has been the violent one at different times. Sergeant Rodriguez opens the questioning this time. As far as your DV history, how many times has he ever put his hand on you before? How many times would take a guess in the two years you've been to me? Mm -hmm. Maybe like four times. Four times? Um, besides the putting his hands around your neck, you, I believe he says this is the third time you've done it. As far as the neck around, the hands around your neck. Um, no, I mean it hit me in the head before. Um, I don't remember when that was. Close fist or how? I I'll just leave that out because I remember there was a time when he hit me really hard in the head and I was kind of discombobulated, but I can't even remember when it was. It might have just been like when we were drunk, but I know it happened, so I'll just leave that out because I can't give you the exact facts. Okay. Um, and I don't want to lie about anything. Um, uh, the last time was in Tulum. Um, he grabbed me by my here or something we were both drinking um but there was a bench in front of our bed and he threw me against the bench and i hit the bench um i headed the bench and i fell on the floor um there was another time my mom was on the phone and he threw me into the wall in the bathroom but um i mean there's i'm not i am certainly a crazy person too. I mean, not crazy. Aggressive. I'm very aggressive and per just really particularly just feels like in the relationship, I guess. And joking, how many times are you true and true? Three. Next, it sounds like Courtney is ready for her exoneration and is hoping the cops will just let her go home in her blood soaked clothes. But that's a long way from happening. Am I going home? We gotta, we gotta, we gotta see everything with the scene and everything, and then we'll, we'll give you a better answer, okay? When will I be able to change out of these bloody clothes? Like I was holding him yeah. while he was bleeding. Yeah. I mean, my toes. Yeah. We're gonna it's see if we can find something for you, hours. and then, uh, and we'll bring, we're, gonna, we're gonna see if we can find something for you, and then we'll bring it over, okay? Now, the sergeant tells her about the warrant to search her apartment and also reveals that everything in the interrogation room is being recorded, a fact which surprises Courtney. Uh, today's date is uh, 0403-2022, and the time is right now is 9.12 p.m. So if you want to read it, I don't know if you want to read it, go to it. It's what it says, and we're going to go into our apartment 2201. We're going to photograph and document the apartment, collect any evidence in regards to the incident. Okay, which is occurred today. That's pretty much all we're going to be doing today. Okay, so we'll be doing that, and again, it's going to make everything a lot, a lot faster. Okay. 
give us a few and we'll, we'll come give you an update. And um, if you need the rest or anything, just let me know. Uh, we're recording either way, so you can just call us or, or knock on the door. Is recording you? Yeah, we have a recorder. Uh, so we have a tape recorder and audio recorder. Um, oh. Oh, I've been praying a lot in here. Right? No, I brought this with me now, but we do have the cameras uh, as well. Yeah, I've been, I've been really, uh, really okay. going through it a little bit. And I'm on it. Um, can I just can I tell you a concern of mine? Yes. Um, I mean, I don't think it's a very big concern because I made it very clear I was in like a pool of pit, like oh, I was yeah, holding him. Yeah. So it's everywhere. It, it, I mean, like there's still wet blood on my ankle. So when I, I mean, it's like a long time in here so without in anything. So I'm like crossing my, my legs. Is that going to like make any difference? In Finally, they find her a change of clothes and Courtney at least has an attorney with her. She no doubt will regret not having him by her side from the outset but any comfort he brings is soon disrupted by a dramatic turn of events. Yeah, what a fucking nightmare. Yeah, so you're living in a nightmare right now. Yes. You know? So just um why are you sitting here? Because they're gonna because they, they don't they don't have a picture of your boyfriend. So they wanna make sure that they have a, a photo, I think, from your uh, social media. So they're gonna because they they don't they don't have his ID, they don't have anything, so they need to know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. they they just want you to identify. Him. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. And I told honestly, I said I don't have a problem with that. I mean, you know, I mean, this is not a uh, who stabbed Christian case. This is you know we know what happened. Uh, well, we know part of what happened. So I feel so much better once they just say he's stable. Yeah, it, and, and I've been asking. Yes, I've been asking. And, that, so and much. that's what we're waiting for. Okay. I mean, I feel like at the end, I mean, if, he, if he's not, that's a lot worse for me. But if he's not, that's just a lot worse for everybody. Yeah. Of course. Thank you. Thanks. So they've asked for an update, and I asked them for an update as well, so they're checking to uh, see what's going on. They're I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I will do with myself if he's, well, if he's not okay. No matter I what. mean, I, I, I clearly we can't be together. Sergeant Rodriguez returns with a picture of Christian they've taken from social media. They need to get a confirmation from her of his identity. Then the bombshell is dropped. So I have a picture. Let me know if this is Christian or not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's Christian. Okay. <coughs> um. So. We have to inform you that Christian did not make it. Okay. Um, unfortunately, the doctors did what they could. And Christian is dead. Yes. Oh my God. This is not real, right? Okay. There is no fucking way. Christian died. Okay. Can I please have a hug? Am I allowed to do that in here? Sure. Yeah. Relax. You'll be fine. No, no, no. Calm down. Calm down. Just take some breaths. Are you going to be okay? I need to, I need to hug my mom. I cannot be left alone in like a room by myself. You won't be. I'm sure this. I just like, no, that's not true. That's not, that did not, that's not real, right? It is real. Christian didn't, Christian is dead. Yes. They're not gonna lie. I know, I just can't believe it. I'll get him, I'm gonna get your parents here ASAP. We, uh, we spoke to your parents and they're trying to do everything possible to get here as soon as possible as well. To what? To get your parents, for them to come over here. So they're doing everything possible right now to, to find a way to get down here. I've been crying so much. Don't and I just can't even cry right now. Just take deep breaths. It's a shock. Just relax. Try to try to try to relax and Okay. We're gonna get you some beer. Okay. Holy shit. No. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Oh my god. I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and it's gonna be the same thing. And I, okay, that's the last time I ever talked to him. It's the last time anybody ever talks to him. Ever. The last thing he ate was f up.
play. Clearly, we can't undo what's already happened, so just. Okay. Just, um, this is going to be a process. What I was saying to that other room, I said, God forbid, God forbid, when, like, from far away, if, 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 if what if, what if I, what if I had actually hit a little bit lower and he died? That's what I said. You remember? I said, God forbid. Then a few minutes later. So we can't, we can't change what, what's occurred and step by step. You'll get through this, all right? I will. Uh, I think the detective spoke to your mom. She's trying to get a flight to get you um, some support because we just met <laughs> an hour ago. Um, we're gonna get you some support, okay? She's suddenly concerned for Christian's mom, who she couldn't even name earlier. I swear, I was holding him for so effing long. And I, the security lady was standing right there, and I was like, why are they taking so effing long? And I was just sitting there, just bleeding, and bleeding, and bleeding, and bleeding. Oh, shit. What happened now? You know. And uh, I do have another question. Damn, that's not fair for his mom to and see him. Um... And his birthday is in eight days. Who has been called for him? Well, nobody has yet yet. We're still trying to find his, his uh, family's information. Do you have a contact number for him? Maybe it's in your phone? Do you know his password, Brian? Definitely. I do know his password, yes. What's his password? You know, it might, might be easier for us to get in there. Well, um, we'll give you guys a minute. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate let, that. Let us know if you need anything else. Mm -hmm. In the water enough, would you like or something else to drink with the soda instead or something to eat? Um, actually, you know what? I think it'll be good for a while. So what I really need is to hit a vape badly. I'm deeply addicted to it and I have for stress. Okay. Here's where the interrogation ended, with detectives concerned about her mental well-being following her recent diagnosis for BPD. So she was taken into a secure mental health unit. Her attorneys, Sabrisa Puglisi and Frank Prieto, are confident that they will present new evidence during the trial to establish that the social media starlet was a victim of abuse and acted in self-defense. Prieto also pointed out the significant amount of time it took for the police to arrest his client after the cryptocurrency trader's tragic death. He stated, I think the fact that the detective in this matter did not arrest her for four months while they investigated the case, it's quite revealing, in an interview with a news outlet. The late boyfriend's family has filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Clenny. This was to cover funeral costs and other expenses arising from his death. The model remains in custody without bail as she awaits trial. Her legal team has revealed that she had requested a restraining order against Obamselli just days before the fatal altercation, something which could be vital to the outcome. In another twist, a security guard in their building informed the police that he had witnessed him pushing her. Her attorneys have characterized the legal action by Obamselli's family as a money grab. The case remains ongoing, but tell us what you think in the comments.